Mohli jste mi říct všechno, vzali jste mi peníze, vzali jste mi pás, ale vítězství jste mi vzít nemohli. Protože v Octagonu je pořád jenom jeden král. Terminátor si jde proto, co kvůli pár dekům ztratil. Dejte mi můj pel, dejte mi dalšího soupeře a dejte mi můj pel, já už zpátky. Carlos Vémola v bitvě o titul šampiona střední váhy s polským vyzivatelem Marcinem Naruškou. Vémola musí počuť moju pravou i levou rękę. Musí po prostu ležet i płakać po válce. Já vím, že vyhraju pro to, jak tu. Já tam radši chci, než abych nevyhrál. Že mě nenávidět, ale hlavně, že ten titul budu mít jak přes pravý, tak přes levý ramen. Jakože se terminátor nebyl. Přání fanoušků byla vyslyšena. Miloš Meloun Petrášek se konečně vrací do akce. Šampion lehké váhy Ivan Buky Buchinger v Superfightu. Lucia Silent Killer Sabová hodlá čelit své dosud největší výzvě v podobě švédské bojovnice Cornelie Hall. Rozjetý Matúš Juráček je po skalku Gábora připraven vyzvať španělského El Spectacula Primeru. A chybět nebudou ani domácí ženská jednička Lucie Pudilová, bombr Leo Brichta. A to vše doprovázené elektrizující atmosférou pod otevřeným nebem na ikonické štvanici v Praze. Živě na octagon.tv Hlavní kartu otevře slámová váha žen. Monika Chochlíková ve své odložené premiéře v Octagonu a proti ní italská bojovnice Julia the Eagle Kinello. Kinello uvádí své profesionální skóre jako čtyři vítězství a čtyři porážky. Dvě své soupeřky dokázala ukončit jednu KO a jednu submisí. Je tedy osminásobně zkušenější než její soupeřka ze Slovenska. Kochlíková je mistrní světa všech možných postojářských disciplín. V MMA je však stále nováčkem. Má na svém kontě zatím pouze jeden rychlý zápas Bellatoru a tentokrát proti sobě daleko zkušenější soupeřku. Myslím si, že budem velmi těžit z mojej výškové prevahy a z mojich dlouhých končatín. Ovšem 25-leté Volkáno Strenčína Kochlíková bude chtít ukázat ve své premiéře v Octagonu stejně rychlé ukončení a vylepšit si svou profesionální bilanci v MMA na 2-0. Je šikovná na zemi, já jsem šikovnější v postoji a vyhrát tak, která si presadí tu svou. Oh, but tonight, yeah. So you you see that with a, with the cor correct blueprint, she's able to beat a striker. 
And already listen to the round of applause. There is the smile on the face of the volcano, Monica Koklikova. Now she is 1-0 and oh in mixed martial arts, but let's jump away to where she has really made her name. She has 70 plus fights in kickboxing and Muay Thai. You saw in the VT there on the promo just how slick, how dangerous her striking is. Now her one fight in mixed martial arts was under the Bellator banner. She went in there against another striker, Jade Gerard. And this is what shows how good her striking is. Jade very quickly switched that into a grappling match because just to the prowess, the, the quality, the, the techniques, the skill in the striking realms that Hoklikova has. Now in the second round, Hoklikova got taken down. She was on her back with the full guard against uh, Jay Durand, and she pulled off a scorpion crunch su submission, which is very, very rare. Very rare submission. Very rare. Basically, you uh, you scissor your legs, you lock your own hands behind your legs with the... Uh, and you uh, squeeze. And you squeeze that rib cage, yeah. and she got the tap. So even... And, and she says in her in interview that she'd only been doing jiu-jitsu for one month, and it was actually in Octagon. There was another one who was a Scorpion Crunch finisher. She watched one of the Octagon fights, saw this, went back, asked her coach to show her that technique. And this was four weeks out from having her first mixed martial arts, and she got that. So this is somebody who takes and learns things extremely quickly. Yeah, quickly, and when you think about it, it's pretty, pretty great submission for uh, for strikers because strikers pretty often get taken down, end up on their back, and when you close your guard and you don't want to, you know, uh, escape that position, and but you still want to be active, Scorpion is one of those options. And she has the right anatomy for it as well. She's very, very tall, very. Uh long and actually her last fight was at atom weight which is crazy to think about she was all the way down at atom weight now straw weight is where she believes she can really make her mark and she has waited for this moment we have two the debut in octagon of this the, the star in muay thai and kickboxing now looking to make a name for herself in mixed martial arts monica hoklikova 10 centimeter height advantage on the side of hoklikova but and a heavy favorite. Heavy, heavy favorite. But experience there on the side of Canelo. And like I said, those are numbers, but within those numbers is a fantastic set of people that she's competed against. Turné Octagon 25 a druhým ženským zápasem dnešního večera. Tentokrát slámová váha 52 kg, 3 kola po 5 minutách. Vaším rozhodčím kleci je Gerd Richter. Pojďme si představit obě dámy. Nejprve Modrý roh. 28 let, 160 cm, 51,6 kg. Combat Academy pod trenérem Palazínem Simonem má na svém kontě 8 zápasů, 4 vítězství, 2 ukončení před limitem a 4 porážky. Za Itálii, v modrém rohu, Julia the Eagle Kinello. Červený roh, 25 let, 170 cm, 52,65 kg na váze. Viktor Jim Trenčín po trenéry Tomášem Tadlákem a Jakubem Millerem. Nastupuje ke své premiéře v oktagonu. V MMA má jeden zápas, jedno vítězství, které ukončila submisí. Za FPD v rámci Nerudova poháru a za Slovensko v červeném rohu. Monika Volkano Chochlíková. Ladies, you know the rules. Protect yourself at all time and listen to my comments. When I say stop, you stop. Fight hard, fight fair. Touch your gloves, please. Step back in your corner. So we are set for this straw weight contest here. Octagon 25. Julia Kinello, the eagle from Italy in the blue corner, taking on the volcano. Monica Koklikova in the red corner. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Jan Malach, calling the action here. They the first fight of the main card. And this is so anticipated. There's such pressure that comes with uh, this debut for Monica. Absolutely. She's, she's handling it so well. All around the hotel, so relaxed, enjoying every single moment. There's an overhand right by Kinello. But Kinello, she likes to use the strikes to try and get the clinch. Once she's got the clinch, then we're going to see the real battle. Can she get Monica to the ground? There it is, the overhand right, pushing Monica up against the cage. Yeah, and I think that's her game plan. 
You gotta say it's a safety. Oh, yeah, hold her against well the fence. Against somebody like that, with that striking prowess, this is how you take away those weapons. And, yeah, and I think that once Canelo holds her, uh, she'll want to let go. She doesn't want to let go. Let's see what tricks she can use to try and get this to the mat. Because that is the key here. We talk about those styles, those fights. Every round starts standing, yeah? So they, yes. they're in the world of Monica before they even begin. And Canelo has to find a way to make that connection. And then once there, get it to the mat. What does Canelo need to do now? She's got that over overhook. Yeah, she's got that overhook. And uh, what, uh, sh uh, on the other hand, Koklikova should do, uh, she should duck under oh. that overhand, overhand right, uh, which is uh, over the overhand grip, and duck under it and take uh, Canelo's back. Uh, what Canelo should do is uh, don't concentrate on, on the head so much, on that headlock and drop lower, go lower. But like you said, Canelo is not looking to let go of this clinch, no. this, this lock. Pressuring against, and this also can be good tactics because even though she's not instigating the takedown, she's still putting pressure, and Monica might have a great gas tank for striking, but yes. it's a different efficiency. Different type of cardio. Yeah. Ta Muay Thai grip, uh, so, I'm sorry, Muay Thai clinch for Koklikova. Very effective uh, 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 clinch, even in MMA. Uh, I saw Anderson Silva absolutely dominate many uh, in his many fights. Rich Franklin. You, you like, that, yeah, Rich Franklin oh utilizing this, uh, this Muay Thai clinch. And the clinch isn't just about controlling the head, it's actually manipulating the movement into your strikes, right? Yes. And look at the space she's trying to make with this frame, trying to dig those knees in, but Canelo still pushing, pressuring. And this might not be pretty, but this is this is where Canelo needs to keep it. Yeah. Separated, yeah. Good, Brichter had enough of that time to set it back in the middle. Monica get off any Outside of leg kick for yeah. Kuklikova. Kuklikova really made a mark. That finish went viral Whoa. around the world, that scorpion crunch finish. And again, to say that just four weeks before, she had never done jiu-jitsu, never done wrestling, and, and I watched the, uh, the the promos on, on the way into this, and uh, the coaches, the wrestling coaches she's working with now, the grappling coaches say she's just a sponge. She's just built to learn these moves, and that's exciting if she's achieved so much in the striking world already. Now to be a mixed martial arts and under the banner of this promotion is fantastic. Now there's a different position. This time, Monica. And Monica holds Kinello against the fence. And I think Koklikova feels uh, feels great in that clinch because once they were on a, on an open mat, uh, both women threw uh, single punches, uh, two punches at a yeah. maximum. So Koklikova looking at her corner there. She looks so relaxed, even though there's obviously a lot of pressure coming from Canelo. How would you score this round? Well, this is this is asking because it's yeah, pretty hard. This to is score. difficult, and it, it only takes one moment. Whoa! Nice. Oh, these Three knees, knees to the body. and an elbow. Wow! wow. And I think Koklikova might just turn this round. Uh, with this combination that uh, yeah, in her favor. And you saw that final elbow, that Stefan elbow, that beautiful weapon from Muay Thai. She did that, and you saw after that, Canelo touching the top of her head, just checking. There's no cut there because uh, it connected cleanly as well. Now, this is some of the action. Go on, talk us through this, Jan. 
There's... Yeah, there's th there, there was that first clinch. Couple of outside leg kicks, followed by round kick to the body by Koklikova. There's the Muay Thai clinch. Couple of knee attempts. Couple of punches. And this is the end of the round. I think this is where these knees start to bury. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See this stepping so elbow. Oh. knees from the Muay Thai clinch and that elbow on the top of the head of Kinello. So round two set to go underway. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Canelo in the blue corner. Kokakova in the red. And still a heavy favorite. That was a close one to call, though, that round. A close one to call, but uh, thanks to that uh, final combination, I would give it to Kokrikova. Canelo had success in being able to clinch Kokrikova, and she used those that big overhand right just to use the momentum to get inside, and let's see if she can do that again. She almost looks a little bit gun shy though. Oh, strong inside leg kick by Kofikola. And I, and I think that one single overhand won't work for Kinello no. against a striker right, uh, oh. like that. But she needs to find a way through those dangerous limbs to get that connection to try and get the uh, the clinch. That's easier said than done. Monica Kokrikova still only 25 years of age. Oh, oh, listen to that. And the crowd appreciate that as well. Heavy inside leg kick. And it looks like that Kinello is only waiting for something. She's hesitating. That's the... And now she uses that again to get the clinch. And these are little learning moments for, for Monica as well, because she put her back against the cage, which. Yes. It's very inviting when you're looking to push and try and clinch against that wall. Can she do anything with it from this position though? Canelo never really got close to any sort of takedown, was able to close this distance. Yeah, because it's like, like I said from the beginning of the fight, she's staying too high. Yeah. She should. I know, I know that Kokikova controls uh, her with, with a wizard, with that overhand uh, uh, left grip, uh, but uh, still, Kinolo should, should go, should drop down and uh, try to take her down. Cheeky little hands coming round the back, knees up the side. Oh, that's starting to open up that target of the head there for Kokikova. She tumbles under to get the underhook now. Canelo yeah, really Canelo is just, not just doing holding her with the position. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to be effective with these positions. If you've worked your way in here and this is where you want to be, you need to progress that. But despite that, Koklakova is still firing the shots. Finding a way to, to pepper Canelo with punches, with knees. Now the tie plum clinch again. Yeah, this is now trouble. it's her opportunity. This this is is trouble. combination. Textbook combination by Kochlikova. One too close by outside leg kick. And Kochlikova is the yeah, walking her she's down. She's walking her down. Yeah, now you see more hesitation. Oh, spinning back fist into that high kick. Now the knees are... Oh, and the body! Oh. And Kinello is hurt. She's hurt. Survival mode here for the Italian. Does well, though. Hey, but but Kokikoa should create space, escape, and follow. Yeah. Oh. And again, these are, these are learning moments. You've got to, to, to be on this stage in just your second pro MMA fight. She's got, she's got space over there for that right knee. Yeah. <laughs> the 
that left leg of Kinello is already red. Twenty-five seconds left in the second. Oh, look at that! She Watch out for these to the, yes. to the head. And you oh. see, you see, though, after those knees to the body, uh, Kinello immediately uh, tries to block that area. Yeah, you can tell this, that is it. Oh, and another elbow on the finish. Another strong uh, finish of the round uh, for Kochikova. Yeah, and when you are um, looking at the scoring criteria, it's all about effectiveness, yes. effective striking, and then effective grappling should the that come into play, but for you, you have the, the, the clinch, the control there of Canelo for some of that round, but there's nothing effective as far as progressing that position. Whereas you see the difference when there's separation and Hoklikova is able to use that striking. She is so confident, and even the, the little gap she's making for the knees, it's, it's very impressive to see. Oh, nice. It was sort of uh, like Melvin Van half uh, combination. Yes. Because uh, when it comes to ideal or perfect combination in kickboxing, it's the combination which uh, rotates you or spins you uh, uh, towards right, right direction uh, for that outside leg kick. So, for example, if you're throwing left hook or uh, left uppercut to the body, you spin for 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 the next strike, which is any any of any of kicks, and it, it gives you that extra power to yeah, it. The spin, yeah, the momentum. Yeah, the momentum. Yeah. So round three underway. Canelo taking the center. Let's see if she looks to try a different approach for a, a pinch or a takedown. And the crowd get, oh. oh! And Canelo is having enough of it. She's feeling it, yeah. you can tell. Still in there, but there is a difference in. Oh, that left leg is damaged. She should focus on it. I mean, Kochikova should focus yeah. on it. Oh, that's better. The overhand right into the takedown. Watch out for Scorpion. Let's see. Let us see if she goes for it once again. She's done a great job from the bottom. Again, she's going for it. She's looking for this scorpion crunch, but uh, it would it would it would work better with uh, with underhooks. Yes. Yeah, she needs those hands underneath, and that means she can really reach back and then apply so much more pressure on that rib cage. But she's working well off her back. Three minutes, twenty seconds here. Yeah, Kinello is on top, but she's not doing enough. But this is progress from the Italian. She has come out and she's made the takedown in the center of the cage rather than up against the cage, which was kind of stifling that momentum to yeah. try and get yeah, it to yeah, the floor. Absolutely. And that's clever as well, turning away. Yeah, away from the cage. Still elbows coming in. Now we've seen Kochikova going for that scorpion position again. But now, will we see any progress with regards to trying to get back to her feet? She's close to the cage there. It'd be good to see her shrimp towards there and try and set some sort of base. Nice, nice work. Well, she seems content, it, yeah. just content to keep firing she's shots. Doing, yeah, she's doing a great job from the bottom. Good, brick to there. Just warning her about the uh, shots to the back of the head. That nape of the neck, that's the target area, the spinal col column you want to avoid. Good communication there from the referee. But here again is where we may be seeing some of the holes, understandably so, from, from Monica. She's against the cage, but still flat on her back. Yeah. 
how she's made space with those long limbs. Canelo's got to get back in there. She can't let her back to her feet. She's worked she so cannot. hard. She cannot. If she oh. wants to stay in that fight, she cannot. And the crowd cheering. As Monica Kochakova back on her feet once again. And what Kochakova should learn from this fight? Oh, the knees to the body hurt. Ah, the knees oh. to the body's hurt. What Kokiko I should learn from this fight is to uh, not get tied up. Yeah. Yeah, because this is going to be the game plan for, I imagine, 99.9% .9 yeah, of her opponents. Absolutely. And plus, uh, Kino was hurt, and uh, right now she's surviving. Yeah. Just because Kokiko doesn't have enough space to do anything. But now she's switched it, she's separated. Last eight. 50 seconds. I like to see one of those teeps, those Muay Thai Yeah, watch out for the strike to the body. Yeah. 40 oh. Oh, looking for the finish. Monica Hochlikova oh. trying to pressure the Italian, Canelo. And again. Exactly. Tied, she cannot finish. Once you tied, and again. Like I know it's frustrating for yeah. Kokikova. But these are, these are the moments she will learn. Learn about this, this new world she's yes. in, this sport of mixed martial arts. Because even in Muay Thai, the clinch is up against ropes, so it's very different to how the cage, how that wall feels as far as yes. trapping you. There we go, three hard rounds between these absolute warriors. Good respect at the end. Credit to Canelo. She ate some heavy shots. Heavy and tied Kovlikova, <laughs> when it comes to the tying her up, oh, she tied it perfectly. Yeah. Oh. And there's a coach. And look at the significant shot. The numbers are crazy. Two, and this is while being tied up against the fence. 215 to 54. 148 to 32. Yes. And it, it's almost overcritical to oh, pick. Oh, there's, 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 there's... That's wonderful, yeah. isn't it? It's overcritical to pick holes in this lady's game, especially when her whole life has been dedicated to one discipline, and now she's stepping into... Uh, it, it's like learning a language, but then you suddenly have to learn eight, nine different languages yes. and be able to speak them proficiently with the, enough vocabulary to be understood. Yeah, plus everyone ex uh, expects from you the same yes. success yeah. that you had in that one discipline. Yeah, but what we are seeing is a young lady who is... She doesn't have to do this. this oh. She's proved herself in other arenas, but this is somebody who... Loves the sport, loves the challenge. I mean, uh, she doesn't have to, but she has to in a kind of way because everybody uh, want to watch MMA nowadays. Yeah, yeah. And she even said the the, uh, the rise of Octagon in both Slovakia and Czech Republic. She noticed that. She saw these superstars being built out of this promotion, these household names in these two regions. And. When you're not getting recognition for your sport in the other ways, then it, it gives you that taste of what could happen, and she's proving it once yes, again. Yes, yes, yes. Dámy a pánové, pojďme se podívat na to, jak zápas viděli bodoví. So let's see how the judges scored this fight. 30-27, 30-25 and 30-27, 30-27, 30-27, 30-25 and 30-27, all for the winner. Vše pro vítězku, kterou se stává Monika Kochlíková. Mluví to? Prosím. Mluví to, ten mikrofon? Mluví to, mluví, mluví to. ano. Dobrý, tak krásný závěr. Nakonec se dostala do neskutečné ráže. Děkujem, děkujem. No, byla jsem oprtná, lebo tak superka má nějaké profi zápasy a ještě má nějakých amatérů. Čo, mám velké brucho, či čo? No, Pozoraš. Jestli ty máš velký břicho, tak už nevím, co bychom <laughs> všichni ostatní měli dělat. Ne, ale zpět tomu zápasu. Já jsem se koukal jenom, že máš v obráceně trenérky, když už to teda chceš vědět. Respektive tu sukinku. Aha, tak to má mrzí. Ne, to Já je v pohodě. Jsi první, kdo si to nasadil v obráceně, zvládnul celý zápas, vyhrál. 
A ještě o tom nevím. Nevadí, no. <laughs> no však, už? Tak já jsem celá, víš, taky zvláštné trenky, zvláštnou sukňu, tak jsem si jich pretočila, aby no, to nikdo nemal Maria, rovnaké. Maria, teď, teď to musíš nosit pořád, jak ti ano. kluci tehdy nosili v obráceně ty gatě, tak to už je teď trademarková věc tvoje. Přesně tak, je to v módě. Jsem trendsetter taky, takže teraz každý bude mít opačné trenky, aby se necítila tak trapně. Teď přijdeš do té vaší, kde ti ta ženská říká, že nemáš jíst bílý pečivo, že děláš váhu a už budou mít všechno v obráceně. <laughs> přesně tak, přesně tak. Ne, tak pojďme o toho dál. Uh, něco, co tě překvapilo v tom zápase, protože spoustu času, hlavně v prvním kole, jste strávili na pletivu a to může být hodně nepříjemné, když to člověk ještě nezažil, tak jako v tvém případě. No, jakože já mám za sebou tak pět měsíců intenzivního trénování na zemi, čiže to není bohvěčo. A ako som hovorila, bola som začiatku taká opatrná. Nechcela som v tom klinčine na začiatku robiť chybu, lebo je rozdiel, keď si minútu na zemi a keď si 9 minút na zemi. Hlavne pre mňa ako stand -uperku. A preto aj na tej klitke som dnes skúšala nejaké veľké veci. Ona bola v tom prvom kole veľmi silná. Potom jej tá sila trošku uchádzala. A potom som už ja využívala skôr tie svoje domeny, čo mám ja. Perfektní. Necháme si to na jindy, protože ty bys jinak uh, mohla odmoderovat celý zbytek večera. Já ti Jeno... můžu na budoucí pomoct, kdyby náhodou ti opadně párťák, tak jsem tu. Já bych tě chtěl mít doma. <laughs> <laughs> to, je, to by nezavře pusu určitě, to máš ta dlánek. No. Uh, 215 úderů si vystřelila na svoji soupeřku a 148 dopadlo jako že signifikantních. To, což to, je podle mě, to je podle mě ženský neoficiální rekord, to ti můžu je, říct. Ne, ne, podle mě Johana Jendršek má víc. Ona... Oktagonu. Tak to ano. Tak okay, dobré, tak jsi spokojená zpět. na první západ. <laughs> Jsem spokojená. Ještě mě budeš opravovat. Prepač. Ne, úplně v pohodě. <laughs> Příště to budeš moderovat ty, já si půjdu sednout. <laughs> dobré, dobré. Monika Chochlíková, dámy a pánové. <laughs> Oktagon se vrací zpátky na Slovensko kde se představí to nejatraktivnější, co domácí scéna nabízí. Šampion lehké váhy Ivan Buky Buchinger. Návrat Gábora Borároše. Bratislavský diamantový čávo Robo Pukáč. Šampion výzvy Samuel Pirát Krištofič. Ženský supertalent Monika Chochlíková. A když na Slovensko, tak rovnou na Nepelu a s fanoušky. Yeah! Oh, 11.9. Bratislava. Lístky v síti Ticketportál a živě na octagon.tv.